The Toronto Blue Jays are in serious trouble, and that's an understatement considering that they just got swept against the Boston Red Sox, a team that they're directly chasing in the AL wildcard race. They're officially five and a half games back of that final spot, and things aren't really turning the corner for this team, so I'll break that down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. And um, this is not a video that we wanted to have to make, but we have to because this team is struggling. They are in the mud right now, and we don't know if they're going to be able to get it out. Now, my biggest fear for this Blue Jays team, Nick, is that they decide that they're close to the wild card race and that they should go for it, that they should sell off some assets in order to address the big league team. I don't think that's smart. I don't think this team is a contender. They've proved that over the first few months of the season. And I think it's just delusion at this point that is keeping them going in this direction. They're not a very good team. They've proven that. And something has to change here because as of right now, they're five and a half games back of that final wild card spot. They are in serious trouble. And I can't see it getting any better because it's just not right now. Yeah, the team is uh, in very, very bad shape. And I've been trying to stay optimistic the whole year. I made a video a couple of days ago how important this stretch of games is. And we've been speaking about June this month being the deciding factor, not only for making the playoffs this year, but for the future of this team and their core and maybe even the management. And they've gone out and got swept by the Boston Red Sox. And they have an off day today to try and regroup. But Peter, at home. At home. At home. Yep, at home. And let's yeah. look at the schedule so far through June. We saw some ups and downs. And then they go out after winning... Back-to-back games against the Cleveland Guardians, they get swept at home in front of their home crowd by the Boston Red Sox, and the offense was what it's been most of the year, which is terrible. And, Peter, now they play a Guardians team with a healthy Jose Ramirez, then the Red Sox again, and then the Yankees. It's a very tough schedule to end June, and there's a decent chance that they're fairly out of this wildcard race if things continue the way they're going, and I'm hoping they don't, but five and a half games back right now of a while where they're lucky they're even within the realm of possibility of a contending for a wild card spot but the question now is it might be just time if this continues again they're going to wait to see how june goes but to retool and just move on from some of their players i don't know this is worst case scenario for this month we said it at the start of the month yeah. and they've uh, they've disappointed the last three games were a gut punch the team's in big trouble and from the future onwards yeah they are in big trouble and as if things couldn't get any worse i have a fly flying around my head right now just just to piss me off even more this blue jays team is in shambles that that's the best way i can put it and i know that you said nick you always have the fan hat on you always want the team to do well i'm a little bit more pessimistic than you i'll i'll say that with uh with confidence but i i think the worst possible thing that this team could do right now is to just win and stay in the race like if they if they rattle off 20 wins in uh, 22 games then yeah maybe I'll say that they're back and that they can compete but it, but if they um if they let's say win 12 games out of 20 yeah are we really sold on the comeback of the blue jays are we going to say oh wow they're they're back they're back let's make a playoff push let's try to get those extra two games of of revenue or whatever it is like I think the worst possible thing that this team could do is stay around that 500 mark and then decide to go all in and then it just backfires and hits them right in the face. Cause I think that's a real possibility. I really do. And it sucks because I, I never want to cheer for my teams to lose. I'm not actively cheering for the blue Jays to lose, but I think if they stay in the mix, if fans keep showing up to the ballpark in numbers, like they have in the past couple of weeks, then nothing is going to change the outlook is not going to be brighter if fans start uh, keep showing up and if they keep teetering on that line of 500 baseball it's just not good enough what we're seeing right now and and they're trying to convince the fan base that it's going to turn itself around and nick i personally can't see it we've seen enough this is not a problem that has lasted for half of a baseball season this is persisting all the way back to last season they had these same issues 
They failed to address them in the offseason, and now it's backfiring on them, and it's just not worked out for them. So do what you can. Try to recoup any assets that you can for expiring contracts that you have, and just go from there. I think that's the best course of action because right now they're just – lying to themselves if they think that they're a contending team yeah and fans tend to agree with you um we saw yesterday's lineup this was the lineup from last night's game and people were very very upset with whoever's making these decisions probably john schneider but whoever it was and you can see here why is turner batting second david schneider or Elvis not playing we're gonna see a Elvis start tomorrow john schneider came out and spoke out but he was questioned before the game, Peter, and this is what he had to say about some of his decisions. Turner's 39, George's 34, Kiermaier's 34. I know there's a lot of public information that suggests they're on the downswing. There's a lot of information the public doesn't get that we have that suggests otherwise. Hopefully that turns for them. And he's basically just been saying, if you look at another thing he said, he basically just said, we believe in George Springer. We believe he's going to bounce back. And in turn, they had him batting in the sixth hole. And, I mean, the offense was brutal the whole way through. So... I don't know. I think a retool is, is in order, but fans share your same sentiment. And I mean, I'm starting to share the same sentiment as well. Obviously, I always want the Jays to win. I'm never going to actively cheer on either of you for them to lose games. But something I thought last year was a wake up call when they got swept back to back wild card yeah. races. It wasn't. They went, they swung for the fences, didn't get Otani. They made the wrong moves, ultimately. The only decent signing they made was Isaiah Connor Falefa. They signed Kiermaier, swung a miss. Turner's been a swing and a miss. Springer uh, this season has been rough. Like, I don't know. They they said Ernie Clement. It just doesn't make sense from the even just like their lineup. Obviously, they have information they're using, but I don't know. At this point, I'm just uh, the only bright spot I have for the next couple of days with the Jays is uh, seeing Arobas Martinez make his debut. That's that's about it for me right now. Yeah, but I was actually speaking to one of our loyal viewers, uh, Lee Fougere, off camera today, and and he was saying the same thing. He said he wants to see this team retool, re-sign Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and and build the team around him. Because you do have some young, exciting players on your current roster. I really liked what I've seen out of Addison Barger. I've liked what I've seen out of uh, out of Dalton Varsho, um, Horowitz as well. And and I just think there are options there that this team can be competitive next year. But right now, running out George Springer, Kevin Kiermeyer every single day, it's just not going to work out for you. And I understand that Springer is signed to that long term deal, and you could see the fly again. Just uh, just really getting under my skin. But uh, you could see George Springer, the re reason why that they're playing him. But I'll use the Astros in, as an example. And I've done this before, Nick. They just released Jose Abreu, who they owed $30 more million dollars to. This guy's a former MVP winner. He was someone that was brought in to help the middle of that order. And it just didn't work out. What's the difference between the Astros and the Blue Jays? The Astros win. And they're not satisfied with being a 500 ball club. They've underperformed at a crazy level this season. They have not met they're expectations the whatsoever. Year. Yes, they're worse than the Jays, and they're 10 games back of the Seattle Mariners. Who saw that coming, coming into the season? But I'm not saying it's all Jose Abreu's fault, but he had a 380 OPS for the majority of the season. That's not that's a good on-base percentage. He had a 380 OPS and uh, they said, all right, enough's enough. We can't keep running you out there. We're going to try to find some other options internally to address your lack of offense. And they just released him. They ate the money, which is something that the Blue Jays could do on Justin Turner and George Springer, which they won't do because they sell jerseys and uh, and they fill the seats. But if you're serious about making the playoffs, if you're the Blue Jays, which they say they are, and I don't believe that they are, then you can't keep running out George Springer out there. You, he, he's not a guy that should be hitting in the middle of the order of a competitive Major League Baseball team anymore. He had some good years in Toronto. He was very good in Houston when they signed him, but he's just not that same player anymore. The bat speed's not there. The all-around game isn't there. He's no longer the George Springer that we knew when he signed over here. So you're going to have to make a tough decision if you're the Blue Jays, and I don't think they have it in them to do it. So things are not going to change if they keep running out three black holes into the lineup. Justin Turner has been good lately, and he has turned it around. But for the majority of the season, him, Springer, and Kiermaier have been in the lineup every day. And that's three auto outs the way that they've been playing. So it's not good. It's not good, and you got to play the kids, especially if you're calling them up. You don't want a Relvis to just rot away on the bench. I don't care about matchups. 
see what you have in this kid and go from there because he's got to play every single day going forward. Yeah, I mean, they signed Kiermaier to a one-year deal and Turner to a one-year deal, so you had to think that they were either trying to save face by missing out on Otani and Soto or they were just trying to think that they could compete this year for a, uh, a championship and a World Series. So I don't know. Very, very frustrating. We rewind back to when Kevin uh, Gosman said like a week ago, if we don't pitch well, we probably lose. That hasn't changed. Like the pitchers are getting frustrated themselves. They're doing everything yeah. they can this year, and they're even having a bit of a down year, but the Jays will be much better. So let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on that. Any final thoughts, Peter, for a wrap up? Hopefully they yeah. can get things going on uh, tomorrow, but I don't know. It's uh, bleak. It's bleak for the Jays. Even though uh, the Jays lost, I'll use the game from two nights ago as an example. You say Kikuchi when he was pitching against uh, Nick Pavetta in that opener. He didn't have his best stuff, uh, and he gave up a lot of home runs. Like The majority of that loss was on him. Four, four home runs. So the majority of that loss was on him. But any single time that the Blue Jays threatened offensively, they did nothing. Getting the bases loaded with no outs, you're getting first and second with no outs or less than two outs, and you're not capitalizing on these opportunities. That's been that's been the story of the season for the Blue Jays, and uh, it's just it's not getting any better. So you got to figure something out here, and uh, th- this fly needs to figure it out as well. But uh, I mean, that's all I got, Nick. That's all yeah. I got because it's just disheartening. I have no other way to put it. They were like three for thirty. With runners in scoring position in that series at home. It's not so going to get it done. It's it brings back bad memories. But let us know in the comments your thoughts on this. How are you feeling? Maybe a retool is uh, becoming more and more imminent by each series loss. But that'll wrap it up. If you want to check out a video from yesterday, click on your screen now. We'll see you tomorrow.